Hello, all benders and non-benders, and welcome back to Avatar Generations. And today, we are going to be talking about the final Team Azula character to be added to the game, Ty Lee. Basically, we all know Ty Lee. I think an unholy number of people just go crazy for Ty Lee in Avatar The Last Airbender. I think she just influenced a whole generation of tastes. Because she's just a wholesome character. I mean, she's even even among the murdery team Azula, she's just the wholesome center of them. So, in game, she is a special element character with a peace faction. Once again, really getting a lot of peace chaos characters lately. Although for her, it kind of makes a little bit of sense because kind of how she is with being like her aura. I suppose, I suppose in that regard, at least it can make a little bit of sense. Little honorable mention here too, is that she is actually our very first Chi blocker character. They've actually made a faction for that. Something we're probably not gonna see for a while again, until Legend of Korra. Once we get to Legend of Korra, we might start seeing some more of that particular faction and some debuffs, which we're gonna go into very, very soon. But let's take a look at her skills here. Her basic sprightly strikes deals four hits of counterforce damage to a single target. Counterforce damage removes defensive buffs and heals self for each buff removed. Grant evasion to Team Azula allies for one turn and increase the turn bar of all Team Azula allies by 5%. That 5% can go up when depending on what your skill level is. So basically, you are attacking. First thing is if you can beat the resistance check. You can remove defensive buffs, this can include things like immunity and invincibility, and heal yourself, which is not bad at all. Evasion increases the chances of receiving a weak hit by 50% when you are attacked. Nice way to increase the bulk of the entire team of Team Azula characters. And then increasing turn bar of all Team Azula allies, meaning that you can basically, especially if you combine with some other effects from other Team Azula characters and other relics, you can really snowball in a hurry, getting a lot of turn bar for the entire team. Now, this is where things get interesting. Deals one hit of expulsion damage, followed by one hit of impairing damage to one enemy and the backline target. Inflict chi block state on each enemy hit for one turn. Now let's talk about that. Expulsion damage, 75% chance to remove up to three buffs on a target, ignoring resistance. This one does not have the resistance check. You can just get rid of buffs straight up, including things like, again, invincibility, immunity, powerful buffs like that. You can just get rid of it. Then impairing damage, randomly decrease the speed for one turn or focus or turn bar by 15% once per turn. So basically, she can first remove buffs, and then she can really impact the enemy team by either decreasing speed, focus, or turn bar. But the headliner here is her chi blocked state. Advanced and combo skills become disabled and the target's damage is reduced by 75%. And if I'm not mistaken, this actually does ignore resistance too. This she'll inflict this on the target and the backline enemy it basically just shuts them down for a turn. They might as well not even exist. First of all, they can't use any of their advanced or combo skills, just they have to use their basic. And then 75% reduction? I mean, they're tickling you at that point. It they, they don't do anything. It literally shuts them down for a whole turn. You hit a Ronin Zuko with this, and he's not a threat for a turn, which is very helpful because, you know, he lasts a long time. So every single turn, you can shut him down is a good thing and like i said it does seem to ignore resistance so very nice effect there and again like i said legend of korra will show up in the future and of course we have amon and his chi blocking soldiers we could be seeing this quite a bit more in the future so definitely keep this state in mind it could become very powerful and very, very relevant. Then her passive, you're not prettier than we are. 
grant immunity to turn bar and speed decreasing effects for one turn at the start of battle for Team Azula allies. Increase the turn bar of all Team Azula allies by 25% when any Team Azula ally falls below 50% in battle once per Team Azula ally. So, what's going on here? This basically guarantees that the team is going to be fast and stay fast. First of all, right at the beginning of battle for one turn, I believe going up to two if you do get to skill level six, grant immunity to turn bar decreasing and speed decreasing. That means that it's just if like the Warden's Tower, let's say you get hit by the Warden's Tower, that will not slow down your speed at all. Doesn't matter. Basically, just, just making sure that they're always going to be fast no matter what you do. It's a powerful immunity effect to that. And then whenever they go below 50%, this is not a this is not an endure effect, but just a nice little thing where if any Team Azula ally goes below that 50% mark, they get 25% turn bar going up to 35% at skill level 6. Basically, just keeping that turn bar train rolling where Team Azula is going to do circles around any enemy they come across. And if that wasn't enough, we have skill masteries. First of all, mastery level two, grant echo to Team Azula allies for one turn when the caster receives a weak hit. You don't see this one used a lot, if I'm being honest. Um, echo is not actually a very powerful buff. It's a 35% chance to get an extra turn, but that 35% chance is not proc very often, and then echo immediately goes away. So nothing crazy there. But but don't worry, she makes up for it with her 3 and 4. Skill Mastery Level 3. Grant Skill Nullifier to Team Azula allies when any ally is killed, including the caster. Basically, whenever someone on your team drops, I, I believe it's specific to Team Azula allies, but I could be wrong. The other Team Azula allies get Skill Nullifier, and basically that allows them to dodge the next attack. Just a nice little thing to keep up the momentum if one of your allies falls. And then Mastery Level 4. Increase the damage of Team Azula allies by 15% for one turn for each Team Azula ally alive on the team at the start of the caster's turn. So, whenever Tai Lee takes her turn, let's assume that Mei, Tai Lee, and Azula are alive. That's a 45% damage buff she's going to grant for one turn. If one of them falls, it goes down to 30%, etc., etc., that's a massive damage buff. Do I even need to explain how amazing that is? 45% for the already incredibly powerful Team Azula. I mean, that is death right there. That is just straight up death. She does some crazy stuff. Like I have said in the past, though, she's premium. She's very premium. You want to get the most out of her. You're going to want to skill level her up as much as possible, which has kind of been the narrative with the entire Team Azula there. They are highly premium characters. These are not your budget characters. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're using your skill tokens. Because, you know, they release three characters at once. Skill token economy is rough nowadays. Now, let's talk about how you actually want to build her. I would recommend speed. I know I've said that a lot with Team Azula. Lots and lots of speed. You'll notice I don't actually have a speed set on her. That's more so a limitation of my own arts than anything else. Um, but I do have, of course, the feather here with 45%. Um, and then some other speed stuff. Got six speed on that and six speed on that, which is actually pretty decent. But more so, I'm more so limited by my options, really. I would love to make her faster, but I really just don't have the arts for it. But I'd highly recommend giving her some speed. Now, as far as accuracy and resistance goes... Like I said, the Chi block state seems to ignore resistance. That one I have never had any trouble with. Of course, she does get her counter force damage on her basic, and then her advance has some effects as well. Mm, you can go either way on accuracy or resistance. That one I don't think you really need to be too picky on. Um, you really just want to try and get her as fast as possible. Her support. I said this for May. I'm going to say this again for her. Azula is the priority. Azula is the priority when you are picking a support for your team. The best one, of course, is going to be the Mongoose Dragon. This will grant a nice healthy speed boost to Team Azula faction heroes. Uh, but again, 
premium option, highly premium option. If you don't have the Mongoose Dragon, then you're probably going to be running the Messenger Hawk on your team to give Azula and any other Firebenders that 20% speed. Because Azula, which is very on-brand for Azula, Azula is the most important character on the team because you want her to be able to pump out those blue flames and get to her Lightning Strike as fast as possible. However, in lieu of that, you do actually have the Komodo Rhino. This is usable by Fire Nation characters, not necessarily Firebenders, so Mei and Ty Lee can actually use it, and it does grant a nice, healthy crit damage boost. Crit damage by 40% at max tier. So basically, that is a budget option you can use, but you're probably going to be building the team to revolve around Azula herself. Now, the Relics. The Relics, she's got some options, and she's got some both premium and and free-to-play options that we are going to talk about right here, right now. First of all, we have to, of course, talk about Pursuit of Perfection, the current event relic. You can get this totally maxed out for completely free, usable on any Team Azula character. Increase the attack and accuracy of all Team Azula allies by 30%, and steal 35% focus when the caster defeats an enemy. Like I said, you can put this on any Team Azula character ally. I'm not sure if I would recommend putting it on Ty Lee, because she really is not going to be getting a whole lot of kills with her effect. She is much more of a disruptor character. She's not quite as high damage. She can do some damage on a good day, don't get me wrong. But probably, if you're really trying to use that that focus um, effect, you're probably going to want to put this more on Mei or Azula. I personally do have it equipped on Azula. However, if you are lacking in options, you can absolutely put this on Ty Lee and still get those buffs, and that is totally fine. Also, Beach Umbrella. Beach Umbrella, funny enough, it was May's signature relic in the Summer Festival, but usable by Fire Nation characters. Ty Lee can use it too. Beach Umbrella will increase turn bar and the attack stat of all allies by 15% for two turns, whenever any character on the field is defeated, excluding the caster. Even post-nerf, this thing is crazy. It basically means whenever somebody dies other than the holder of the beach umbrella, your whole team gets a turn bar increase and an attack increase. They had to nerf the snot out of this thing, and it is still effective to this day. This is absolutely a fantastic option. Um, some premium options... The Circus Lion is her best in slot relic. What this will do, remove one negative effect on each ally at the start of the enemy's turn and increase the turn bar of the caster by 10% each effect removed. So what happens here? When the enemy takes a turn, this Circus Lion will cleanse a debuff off of each of your allies. So it could that could be like a maximum of, of like four, maybe... Yeah, four, basically. So one for each ally, if you have your full team still alive. And if you have this at maximum tier, that would grant her 40% turn bar. I believe that, like, at base, if you just have one copy, I think it's 20%. For, yeah, that would be 20%, because basically 5% four times, 20%. That's a nice turn bar increase that can really get um, Ty Lee going. But... This is a premium option, and I will also point out it is exclusively peace and special character. Um, it's exclusively a peace and special character relic. So at the moment, only Ty Lee can use it. Like it is, it is specific. However, some other options here. Again, another premium option, but the Black Bouquet is fantastic. Caps the damage of each attack to no more than a certain percentage, depending on, on your tier. Of the character of the caster's max HP. This effect can only happen once per turn at HP thresholds and is only active for the first five turns of battle. This is the anti one shot relic. You put this on a character and you get hit by somebody hard like Ronan Zuko or Moonslayer Zhao, and it will just stop the damage you take at a certain point when this relic triggers basically making you impossible to kill for a second or two. This is usable on any Team Azula ally, and it is a fantastic relic. Also, 
We do have some more free to play options. Probably the best free to play option to look at here would be the Sugi Horn. Um, usable by peace characters. Increase max HP by 16% for the duration of battle. And grant HP regen to the caster and up to two random allies for one turn when the caster performs any action. This is a nice little support relic. It's not the best one in the world compared to the ones we've talked about prior to this. But basically, it increases Ty Lee's bulk and grants a nice little bit of healing to your entire team, which can come in handy every now and then. But that is Ty Lee, and we have now gone through each of the Team Azula characters. So now I'm going to I'm gonna talk about that. Now we've gotten to this, this auspicious occasion of finally being through it, I want to talk about it very briefly. The characters themselves are cool. The characters themselves are very cool. They're powerful. We wanted them to be powerful, of course. I question the release strategy, though, because they released three new characters at once. That was a lot. I feel like they could have spread it out a little bit, released May once, released Ty Lee a week later, and then released Azula a week later, and maybe not made all of them Peace Chaos characters. Like, May definitely could have been an offense characters. Ty Lee, Peace character makes a little more sense for Ty Lee, but she also could have gotten away with being a mind character with Azula then being a Chaos character. That one makes sense to me. I feel like they could have spread it out and made them not all Peace Chaos characters. And I personally feel like the rollout would have been a little bit smoother because we've been in a bit of a dry spell now. Um, I believe they're working on raid boss stuff right now, which, of course, you know, we want that to be done right. That's a biggie. But we are definitely in a bit of a dry spell at the moment, faster than I thought. I kind of thought Team Azula would last us a bit longer. Um, but they just they just released them all at once, which was not was was not the most stress free experience in the world because wow that banner is nuts. Just a reminder, looking at the banner here, that's a thirty four percent rate per character. These three were tough to get. We managed, and we had some actually pretty exceptional luck at the time. But I'm kind of hoping they don't do this again because that was a little insane. Now. I don't think there are really any more trios, with the exception of maybe the Red Lotuses, Red Lotus characters in um, Legend of Korra, but that's that's four of them, and I don't think they would do that. I, I hope not. Um, so I don't foresee this happening again anytime soon, and I get it. They wanted to have a big a big Team Azula release that would get people hyped up. I mean, this is admittedly an amazing image of just the three characters there, um, but that was a bold choice in my personal opinion. But I emphasize personal opinion. That's just me talking here. Still, they're a lot of fun. Fan favorite characters. You gotta love to have them. And I hope that you have had some luck with getting your characters I know I had a nice, healthy little bit of luck, but hopefully you did as well. So that is all we have for today. Hopefully we shall get some new content very soon. Very much want some guild content, some raid bosses or something along those lines, because, you know, guilds have been in here for a while, and I think people are building up their coins, um, their guild levels are going up, but it's time to really start putting guilds to work. I am very excited for that. So hopefully we shall get that very soon and we shall see you next time. Have a good one.